Oh hey, it's Wes. And uh, our shutter angle is way off on this video. I'll explain soon. We've been talking a lot about color science and getting the most out of our colors, getting the best sources of light. So here we are today using our Anglerfish COB LED light, which has come out on top for our R9 values, CRI and so forth. I'm using my Godox Softbox, which also tested as the best for color reproduction. You can see those past videos up here somewhere. But some have said, why don't we just correct our color? And today we're gonna do an experiment to see how close we can get. Can you just cheap out on your light and your softbox and just use this data color spider checker video instead? We're all gonna learn something today. <laughs> and before we go any further, let's place our bets. One of these has a high quality color to begin with. The other one has lower quality and corrected white balance of the output. And one is just way off, the white balance is way off. And then we corrected them all to try to look the same. But which one is which? And these are the finished results that, I mean, should look the same. We've dragged all the sliders so that everything is ostensibly as identical as possible. And lock it in in the comments below to let me know what you think it is. No backsies. Just a quick note, this is the Spider Checker video, which has a panel specifically designed, well, both panels specifically designed for video. And we also have on the other side, our white balance and focus confirmation panel. But the nice thing about the video is you have the specific panel that makes a really nice pattern that's easy to square in on for verifying things in your video editing program. One thing that makes it easier as well is holding it sideways and squaring it up with your frame like a so. Now, a lot of the time you're just gonna get your talent to hold that, but I wanna keep things very consistent for our test. So this is gonna be locked in right here. And so we have our good light, our good softbox. We're gonna take that into the editing suite, final cut for us and see how that comes out. And then we're gonna do a little switcheroo here and try out our light with our worst R9, worst CRI, with our bad old yellowed softbox that's also giving us bad color quality. All right, so one thing to note about this light setup is that it's making things really yellow. So we're gonna start out with the light set to 5600K. Obviously we're very yellow here. We're gonna try to color correct that. There we go. Now we are corrected as much as possible. It's still just a little bit warmer than it's supposed to be, I believe, no? I mean, it looks okay. We're not gonna talk about uh, getting manual white balance. You'll wanna use the gray card to do a white balance in your camera before doing any of this. But the whole point here is to get some wild uh, starting points here, so. All right, here we are in Final Cut and we're going to first select all the clips, apply our Phantom LUT neutral to get to our starting point. Honestly, I really like the way that this first clip looks already. Color temperature is a little bit cooler than it should be, but I kind of like that look generally. And then we're gonna pop over and prepare to draw masks on each of our clips. Even though we can actually already see the color pattern here in the vector scope, we could probably do this without getting into all this messiness of masking out the shape and zooming into the color calibration tool here, but this is gonna make it much more obvious exactly what we're doing. The first thing we're gonna mask into is our Luma or our exposure chart here, which is going to show us how each of our R, G, and B line up with each other with regards to Luma. And as you can see, we have some stepping issues here. There's a chance you're gonna to have to select the top right of your RGB parade chart and change that from parade to overlay, which will show you the separation of the R, G, and B here so that you can get into the nitty gritty and get that adjusted. As you can see, I'm preparing to have some adjustment points on the right in our color curves just to make my life a little bit easier. Now the number of points that you're going to need is going to vary wildly. It just depends on how much of a mess this is to begin with. Some people like to start with the global adjustments. You pull the tops, you pull the bottoms. Some people like to start with points. It's all a matter of what turns out to be more convenient for you. And there we go, they're lined up pretty well. As you can see, when you apply it, it's good. When you take it off, it's all split up again. Now our colors are the same matching luminances. Now you can get into the nitty gritty and really tweak those shadows, but it's not absolutely necessary depending on what kind of work you're doing and how exacting it needs to be. 
Now we're going to shift our frame around so that we're focused right in on the color pattern card to make this all easy to see in the vector scope. Before we edit the colors, we're going to want to pump up that saturation just so that we can see the difference and the positioning of the color much more easily and it makes our changes appear much broader and more significant. Then when we're done, we'll pull that back down again. One by one, we're going to select the most saturated colors on this board. That's the top row that we see here and it will be the outer ring in our vector scope. Some people leave the automatically generated in-between points in place, some people take them out. I prefer to take them out because color is a spectrum and it's not just individual points and so you do want to move things in a slightly more broad manner to smooth things out. And now we're just going to drag those points up and down. Try not to shift them while you're dragging, that can be a little bit tricky. It would be nice if you could choose to lock them in place. Just drag them straight up and down until they line up with those ideal boxes. As you can see, my blue was way off, as was my red. The cyan's just a little bit. The green was off quite a bit. There we go, our greens are greening now. And easy peasy, we're pretty much lined up there. And then now that we're done, we're going to reset our saturation so that we don't look completely ghastly on the other side. I don't want to scare myself. And now we can reset our mask and reset our transform and see what that did for us. And then we can compare. Here's with our changes and then unselect our color boxes and here's without our changes. So we have a cooler tone and now we're a little bit warmer, more accurate, more contrasty. And now you don't need to go through the nitty gritty of all that again. We're just going to apply the same changes to both of our other clips to pull them into where they need to be. So we'll flip through that real fast. Now I'm going to slow it back down again and say, oh boy, I had some trouble getting the RGB overlay straightened out on this one where we have our bad light with the bad softbox, but we've compensated for it with the color of the light coming out because when we compensate with the color of this light, we actually further lose our CRI and R9 accuracy. And so our color is just kind of exploded here. <laughs> and the amount of tweaking I had to do at every single level to get this straightened out was kind of maddening. But in the end, I did get it very close. It was just a lot more work. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. That's, that's close enough. Now, interestingly, I found the colors were more inaccurate, further off base in this corrected version than it was in just the one with the awful white balance, which again speaks to the fact that the CRI is just bad in this particular instance, whereas the old one, the colors were there. The issue was mostly just in white balance. All right, we have our changes locked in now, and I assume that you had your guesses locked in. So let's see how we did. Surprises? Any upsets? Be honest. All right, let's have a look at a few side by sides here. Back with our good light and whew, what a journey. What are your thoughts? Did we discover anything new today? As you can see, we can always refine things and get ourselves to the best point possible, the starting point, so that we can have confidence in the colors that we are using. But for the most part, it's also still garbage in, garbage out. At least that's my take on this. You wanna start with the best light, the best calibration, and then from that, you can apply further LUTs, further changes, so that you can be confident that you have 
a solid foundation on which to work. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you want to pick up one of these or one of my highest tested lights, I'll have links down below. Until next time, let's go take some very color accurate videos.